I'm Ryan. Um, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about debugging JavaScript. I've spent probably the last year, year and a half working in the lab, so I've had to deal with a lot of hairy code, entangled code. So I've picked up a few trip, uh, tips and tricks here and there that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, just to go over a quick agenda, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the basics with the debugger, um, talk about some of the relatively unknown abilities of the console, and then get into a little more advanced topics like framework black boxing and debugging asynchronous code. But before I start, I just wanted to go over the history of my JavaScript development. Uh, when I was first learning JavaScript, this was my go-to way to debug, right? I'd put alert statements all over my code, run the page, and then click through a bunch of pop-up boxes to verify my inputs. Soon after that, I learned about console.log, and I kind of went trigger happy there, just sprinkling them all throughout the code. But I'd still be susceptible to mistakes, like you see up there. I'm trying to log B, but I'm passing it the value of A, so I would stare at the code for hours just wondering, how come this isn't what I expected? Um, so I quickly had to learn how to use the debugger. And it's an extremely useful tool. I'm sure most of you probably already use it pretty well, but I just want to go over some of the tips of it. Um, I'm going to do a little demo in Chrome, but uh, whatever I do here is, can pretty much all be done in Firefox Developer Edition. Um, so I want to go over a quick example, or two examples. The first is a calculator um, where you can pass in two inputs, press calculate, it gets an uh, the result. And then the example two triggers an event and then quickly flashes an, a DOM element and then hides it again. So if we look at the code for that, um, cool. So we have a calculator function. Um, we set a click listener to it, grab the first input's value, the second input value, call add on it, um, sum them up together, and set the result. The second example, we just on click trigger an example. Uh, and then we receive that example and then fade a div in and out. So we'll hop right into the browser. Cool. So usually the first thing I do is go to the sources panel and just to go over a quick of the basics, uh, command P does a fuzzy finder so you can search all the files in the current um, directory. And then you can also do command option F to do a search among all the files. So if I search for the word add, we see that it appears five times in my example JS file, three times in jQuery. Um, another useful thing is the pretty print function. So if you look at this little object over here and you have a minified file, you can click on that and it will expand it. Now it's not actually deminifying it, it still is minified code, but it is uh, expanding the white space to make it a lot more readable. And then when you start debugging in here on a minified file, you can kind of get the general idea of where the code is happening. Cool, so after I do that, I'll generally go and map my, um, my folder, my actual file system, to the browser. And that allows me to edit the code in the browser and it will actually save back to the file system. So if I uh, right click on resources, I can do add folder to workspace. Um, that's the first step. Then the second step is to actually find uh, the file you're working on and tell it, hey, I want to map this example JS from the file system to the example JS that the browser is serving up. So if I right click on that, do map to network resource, um, and refresh, we can test this out. So over here, I'm going to do var foo equals bar, save it in the console, and then we'll just verify that it's actually updated in the, uh, oops, I want to verify that it's actually updated. Okay, so we have var foo equals bar, so that's all good. Cool. Um, next, we want to go over some uh, breakpoint basics. So similar to, um, similar to Ruby or uh, Pry in Ruby, you can set breakpoints and step into functions. Um, so I'll set a breakpoint right at this click listener. Uh, do 1 plus 2 equals. Um, and then we have our call stack on the right side, and we have the ability to step over to the function call or into the function. Um, one thing that you'll notice is that I actually name my anonymous function. So I, you see in here it says function clicked add, and that actually allows it to come up into the call stack, which makes debugging a little bit easier. Uh, but then I can go ahead and start just stepping through. Um, I can see my local scope over here, as well as anything that's closured or in the global scope. So I see first num is equal to one, uh, second num is equal to two. Now I want to step into the add function, uh, and I have a new local scope with a equals one and b equals two. Um, 
Cool. So now I want to go over a little of the console techniques. Uh, some of the m useful ones are console.trace. Um, so everybody knows console.log, but console.trace allows you to uh, print the, sh the stack trace out into the console when it hits that point. So we hit, we run the code, hit console.trace, and now we have a full stack trace of where we were in that moment of time, which is pretty useful. There's also console.assert, which allows you to pass an expression in. So every time a is equal to one, this will be fine. But any time it's not equal to one, this is going to give a console error message. So we'll just verify that um, console.assert was fine. But now when we change a equal to two, we get an assertion failed that a was not equal to one. So that's useful anytime you're looking for a particular value that you expect to be into the side of your code. Um, there's also the inspect command. So everybody knows how to right click an element or use the console tools, the developer tools to uh, inspect the element in the DOM. But you can use the same thing using the command line inspect and pass it an HTML element and it will select it for you. And then the neat thing about that is the last four variables that were inspected, regardless of command line versus right clicking, uh, get stored in dollar sign zero through dollar sign four. So that's also useful too. And then every time you reinspect something, uh, all the elements will get shifted to um, be indexed by one more. Cool. So now let's jump into a little more advanced topics. Uh, in example two, we have this trigger event that is asynchronous. Um, so you see here, when we click on it, we trigger an event. Uh, we receive the event, and then we um, fade a DOM element in and out. When I set a breakpoint there and click it, take a look at the call stack. Uh, you see that this fade and complete happened, but we don't really have any reference to how it was called because it's asynchronous, right? Some set interval happened, and we just don't know any context. Luckily, Chrome Developer Tools has this async option in the top right that I'm going to click on. Um, and then when we do that again, we see that fade and complete happened. A bunch of other functions happen that jQuery does. We had a set interval, but we can eventually get all the way back to where it was called initially in this example to received method. Um, so that's useful, but all this jQuery is pretty cluttered. And that will get me to my final point, uh, which is framework black boxing. Um, so there's a Chrome uh, experimental tool for uh, the developer version that you can enable to black box any content scripts. Um, so in this case, we know we have jQuery in there. We want to add the jQuery library. And you can actually pass it any regex. Um, but when we do this same example, uh, it kind of hides all the clutter of the jQuery. And we see that fade incomplete happened. There's some jQuery stuff but we can easily trace back to all the code that we wrote and ignore all the jQuery library. So we actually took 28 function calls from the call stack and reduced it to three, which I think is pretty nice. Um, you can also click show to just see everything that happened if you do need, have a need to go into the jQuery. But then the other cool part is that you can, um, it applies to actually stepping when you set a breakpoint. So if we set the breakpoint to document.trigger and we want to step into the function, normally without uh, framework blackboxing, we'd have to go through like 20 function calls of jQuery, but now it will take us directly to the function call that received the event. Um, so that makes debugging a lot easier. Uh, that's all I had for you guys today. Hope you enjoy.